the bodily systems involved in dysphagia and aspiration risk uh, serve as a precursor for the breakdown of the remaining systems. So when we look at where the breakdown of the bodily systems occurs, we really need to begin at what was the first system and how did that begin to have an effect on the other systems? How did that evolving and accelerating effect begin to move through the remaining systems? So where are where is a person in the course of their disease? Where is a patient in the course of their disease? And how can the neurological and cognitive systems of dysphagia serve as a precursor for a breakdown of the remaining systems? We can get that information from the case studies in Alzheimer's disease that we'll be looking at. We'll be able to look at the respiratory system of dysphagia in a bit more depth, as I kind of alluded to, specifically pulling apart that aspiration, that aspiration pneumonia, the aspiration pneumonitis, and how this can all be accelerated in that community setting. But finally, we will finish up with the neurological, cognitive, and muscular systems. We're going to bring it back. We're going to bring it back to the fundamentals, looking at dementia, malnutrition, and that sarcopenia, and that uh, skeletal function, the way that the muscular, respiratory, the neurological systems really come together, all under the command of the cognitive system and the executive functions to affect the outcome of the patient. What you may have noticed here is that all of the case studies that we're going to be looking at as well are the major diagnoses found in the new PDPM model, and this is intentional. I specifically wanted to look at case studies that were related to the diagnoses that CMS has identified as being significantly related to return to hospital admissions. All of this is true even in the absence of the COVID-19 diagnosis. When we add the coronavirus on top of this, these patients are highly likely to go back to the hospital. In an article in McKnight's from February 2019, McKnight's talked about the greater emphasis on the role of the SLP, that the PDPM changes are going to put the SLP on equal footing with PT and OT and disentangling that payment problem just increases the ability of the patients to be able to get access to what they need because SLPs are absolutely vital in intervention. And that true that is more importantly, uh, that the fact that SLPs are important is more true today than it was a year ago, especially two years ago. And the importance of the SLP continues to grow in our uh, pandemic, post-pandemic crisis. COVID-19 in general is going to affect the respiratory and neurological systems of dysphagia. Healthcare-associated pneumonia or uh, community-acquired pneumonia has taken on a whole new meaning this year. As we know, in the state of Washington, some of the earliest cases and the outbreaks occurred in nursing homes, and uh, various associations have had to take really strong stance on the care of long-term care patients uh, in assisted living facilities and in independent living facilities. There are oral, pharyngeal, laryngeal, tracheal, bronchial, lobar, uh, cellular, and other long-term consequences that we don't yet know about. We know for sure that there is going to be tissue scarring, but we don't really know the extent of how those, uh, how those consequences are going to play out in the future in these patients and how much is going to affect them. What you can guess, just right off the top, this is a, an intuitive guess. But considering the respiratory and neurological systems of dysphagia are affected, there's a high probability that speech therapists are going to have an increased need. Just like there's an increased need for uh, respiratory therapists right now, uh, there will likely be uh, an increased need for speech therapy because each of the systems affected are within the specialty of the speech language pathologist. And in general, if that patient has a dementia diagnosis, in general, fever has devastating consequences on dementia. Uh, and if you think about it, any changes to your body temperature are going to affect that nervous system. And so if a patient already has an MCI or a dementia diagnosis, the fever alone can be devastating. If they've got neuropsychiatric disturbances, other speech disturbances, those patients can be at a very significant risk. Uh, so if they have a COVID-19 diagnosis, not only are they at risk while they are sick, uh, they are at risk for significant long-term consequences of being 
sick. 